I remained within its walls for eight years, six as a pupil and two as a teacher. During this time, my life was uniform, but not unhappy. Miss Temple had remained as superintendent. Her friendship and society had been my continual solace. She had been as mother, governess, and lately, companion. However, she married and moved with her husband to a distant county. From the day she left, I was no longer the same. My world for some years had been Lowood. Now I remembered that the real world was wide and varied. I placed an advertisement in the paper seeking a position as governess. There was but one reply, from a Mrs. Fairfax of Thornfield. I accepted. Farewell, Miss Eyre. Farewell. As I was preparing to leave Lowood, Bessie came to visit with her little boy. Over tea, she told me the fate of the Reed family. Miss Georgiana planned to run away with a young lord last winter, but Miss Eliza revealed their secret. The sisters live together now, quarrelling like cats and dogs. John Reed went to college but left quickly. He had become a dissipated young man and Mrs. Reed was very worried about him. Bessie was much impressed with my accomplishments and declared me to have become quite a lady. She asked if I had ever heard from my relations, for seven years ago a Mr. Eyre came to Gateshead seeking after me. Focused on my travels to Thornfield, the matter soon passed from my thoughts. Will you walk this way, ma'am? Here she is. How do you do, my dear? John drives so slowly, I fear you must be cold. Come to the fire. Mrs. Fairfax, I suppose? Yes, I am the housekeeper at Thornfield. Mr. Rochester, the master, is away. Let me help with your cloak. Oh, that's fine, I can manage it. I anticipated coldness, but she treats me like a visitor. I am so glad you have come. It will be quite pleasant to have a companion. The maid Leah is a nice girl, and John and his wife are decent people, to be sure. But they are only servants, and one can't converse with them on terms of equality. You have been travelling all day. You must feel tired. I'll not keep you up all night. If you've got your feet well warmed, I'll show you to your bedroom. It is only a small apartment, but I thought you would like it better than the large front chambers, which are so dreary and solitary. Ah, thank you. A chill, vault-like air pervaded the halls, suggesting cheerless ideas of solitude. I found myself very grateful indeed for Mrs. Fairfax's kindness in securing me a more comfortable room. Out already? I see you are an early riser. Good morning, Mrs. Fairfax. How do you like Thornfield? I like it very much. Thornfield is a pretty place, but I fear it will be getting out of order unless Mr. Rochester should decide to live here, or at least visit more often. Great houses require the presence of the proprietor. Come, let me show you around. Oh, please do. You keep these rooms in such good order. No dust, no canvas coverings. Except that the air feels chilly, one would think they were inhabited daily. Though Mr. Rochester's visits are rare, they are always sudden and unexpected. He dislikes having a fuss made when he arrives, so I keep the rooms in readiness. Is he an exacting, fastidious sort of man? Not particularly so. He has a gentleman's tastes and habits, and he expects to have things managed in conformity with his wishes. Do you like him? Is he generally liked? Oh, yes. The family has always been respected here. Almost all the land in this neighbourhood, as far as you can see, has belonged to the Rochesters for generations. But what is his character? His character is unimpeachable, I suppose. He is a bit peculiar, perhaps. He has travelled a great deal and seen much of the world. I've never had much conversation with him. In what way is he peculiar? I don't know. It's not easy to describe. You cannot always be sure whether he is in jest or earnest, whether he is pleased or the contrary. He is difficult to understand, but he is a good master. Do the servants sleep in these rooms? No, they occupy a range of smaller rooms to the back. No one ever sleeps here. You have no ghost here, then? None that I have ever heard of. 
<laughs> Mrs. Fairfax, did you hear that loud laugh? Who is it? Some of the servants, very likely. Perhaps Grace Poole? She sews in one of these rooms. Sometimes Leah is with her. They are frequently noisy together. It was such a curious laugh, distinct, formal, mirthless. Grace? Too much noise, Grace. Remember directions. Yes, ma'am. I guess it really was nothing. Have you met your new pupil yet? No, but I would like to. Good morning, Miss Adele. Come and speak to the lady who is to teach you and make you a clever woman some day. Eh? C'est la ma gouvernante. Ma oui. Are they foreigners? They are speaking French. Adele was born in France and only arrived six months ago with her nanny Sophie. Hello. What is your name? Eyre. Jane Eyre. Eyre? Bah! I cannot say it. I am to be your governess, Adele. Ah! You speak my language as well as Mr. Rochester does. Mr. Rochester is always kind to me. I have known him since I was little, and he always brings me presents. After my mamma went to the Holy Virgin, he asked if I would like to go and live with him in England, but he has not kept his word, for I never see him. Mamma used to teach me to dance and sing. A great many gentlemen came to see Mamma, and I performed for them. I liked it. Shall I let you hear me sing now? The subject was strangely chosen for an infant singer, the tale of a girl abandoned by her lover and seeking revenge, and I thought it in very bad taste. You sing very well, but now it is time for your lessons. Oh, I wanted to dance for you, too. Adele was a lively child who had been spoilt and indulged, and therefore was sometimes wayward. Under my care, she gradually became more obedient and teachable. She entertained for me a vivacious, though perhaps not very profound, affection, and her efforts to please me inspired affection on my part as well. Towards Mrs. Fairfax, I felt thankfulness for her kindness and pleasure in her society. When alone, I not infrequently heard Grace Poole's strange, discomforting laugh. I tried to speak with her a few times, but she seemed a person of few words. My first three months at Thornfield passed smoothly. Still, my restless nature made me discontent with this peaceful situation. Women are supposed to be very calm, generally, but women feel just as men feel. They suffer from restraint and stagnation precisely as men would suffer. It is in vain to say human beings ought to be satisfied with tranquillity. They must have action, and they will make it if they cannot find it. One day in January, Adele was too ill for lessons. I volunteered to carry a letter for Mrs. Fairfax to the post in Hay, two miles away. How far away Thornfield seems from here. What's that sound? A horse? I should wait until it has passed. What's this? I remember Bessie's tales of the guy trash, a spirit which haunts solitary paths. Could this be it? It's huge. How superstitious I am being. It isn't a guy trash, just the rider's dog. What the deuce? Ah! Ugh. Sir, can I do anything? You must only stand to one side. Down, pilot. If you are hurt and want help, sir, I can fetch someone from Thornfield Hall. Thank you. I am fine. I have no broken bones, only a sprain. You may go. I cannot think of leaving you, sir, at so late an hour in this solitary lane, until I see you are fit to mount your horse. I think you ought to be at home yourself. Where do you come from? From Thornfield, but I will accompany you to Hay, for I am going there to post a letter. Whose house in Thornfield? Mr. Rochester's. Do you know him? No, I have never seen him. You are not a servant, given how you are dressed. I am the governess. Ah, the governess. Deuce take me if I had not forgotten. He's so tall. Ugh. 
I cannot ask you to fetch help, but you may assist me a little. Yes, sir. Try to get a hold of my horse's bridle and lead him to me. You are not afraid? <laughs> Since you cannot catch my horse, I must beg of you to let me use your shoulder. Here, boy, settle down. Please hand me my whip. It lies there under the hedge. Thank you. Now make haste with the letter to Hay and return as fast as you can, little elf. What? The incident had occurred and was gone for me. There was no romance, no indication of importance, yet I was pleased to have been active, to have done something in an existence all too passive. His face, so stern and masculine, stayed with me all through my walk to Hay and back. I'm returned, Mrs. Fairfax. Miss Jane, welcome back. Eh? The guy trash? No, no, the dog from the lane. What dog is this? He came with Master. With whom? Mr. Rochester, he's just arrived. John has gone for a surgeon, for Master had an accident. His horse fell and his ankle is sprained. Master wishes to take tea with you and Adele. You'd better go change your frock. So it is you, little elf. You have the look of another world. Were you waiting for your people, sitting out in the woods? For whom, sir? For the men in green. It was a proper moonlight evening for them. Did I break through one of your fairy rings that you spread ice on my path? The men in green forsook England a hundred years ago. You will find no trace of them any more. 